In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Lamy Lady Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Lamy Lady fountain pen. This is, I think, the most unusual fountain pen that Lamy has produced. If you guys think of, there's another one that's more un lummy like than this one, please let me know in the comments. But this is a very strange pen for Lamy. I don't think it has quite the modern aesthetic that most of their pens tend to have. That's my opinion. I think most of them are, have a bit more of a clean look. Going into the background of this pen, this was produced in, I believe, the early 90s. This pen, the main feature here is the porcelain body. This was made by Rosenthal in Germany. They are a big porcelain and glass manufacturer. They are still around today, although I think they went bankrupt in between the time that they produced this pen and where they are now. They currently make glassware and porcelain items for Versace. This little container that I have here is made by Rosenthal for Versace. It's a higher-end porcelain brand. The other porcelain pens that I can think of are made by Mont Blanc and Meissen. Meissen is a lot more expensive than Rosenthal, and those pens were very limited edition pens, thousands of dollars. Anyway, the material for the body is unusual. I can't think of a lot of other porcelain pens. I think Loyman K, which I believe they're out of business now, did some also very, very expensive porcelain pens. When this was released, I believe in the early 90s, it was under $300, so a pretty affordable porcelain pen, but a very expensive pen for Lamy. Rosenthal, I believe, did three or four different patterns. This more geometric one, I think, is the most common, or at least it's the one that I've seen for sale most. They did another more like swirly, organic looking one, also with a gold trim, and then they did another one with a silver palladium trim. But I believe there's only three or four versions of this pen. Now, okay, walking through it. So we have this sort of brushed satin, it's not brushed, it's sort of a satin gold finish on the ends. This is very similar to the finish on the Waterman Edson cap. I'll post a link to that review that I did up in the corner. And like on that Waterman Edson, this is, I think, a weak point for these pens. You will get some marks on these satin areas and there's no way to fix it. So if you are buying one of these, you want to pay close attention to these satin accents because they're where you're going to probably see most of the wear. Now, noticing that this cap has no clip, you'll see there's two roll stoppers, one on the cap and one on the bottom of the body, just to prevent it from rolling off of the desk. You'll see there's La Mie here in satin, and then it's a screw cap. There's not too many turns. It's about a quarter turn to get the cap off. And we have a satin grip section here. Pretty straight. It does have slight taper. And then we have the 14 karat gold nib. This is the gold nib from the Lamy Persona, which was the predecessor to the Lamy Emporium. You can see it kind of wraps all the way around almost, touching. Very cool looking nib. I definitely prefer the look of this nib to the one on the Emporium. It just has a more unique look. And on the nib, we see Lamy 585, 14 karat gold. Notice how it kind of points downward. It's a pretty cool looking nib, very nice design here. Now the body is completely straight. And again, this is the porcelain section. And then we have these sort of high gloss gold rings on the ends there, really quite nice. This is a cartridge converter pen. It takes the Lamy T10 cartridge and the, you know, I haven't put the, the Z27 on here. At the time they had a Z26, but I'm pretty sure it's the exact same fitting. Notice how the threading is on the inside of the grip section. So 
it's completely smooth here. It's all kind of done internally. Pretty nice. It's a very cool looking pen. One thing I don't like about it is that it doesn't post, although I suppose if it did, we would be scratching this finish a lot, but there's literally no way to post this pen. It does not fit over the top. So let's do some measurements. In terms of the length, it's roughly 142, 143 millimeters. So even though this is called the Lady, it's not really a small pen. Now uncapped, we're looking at about 136 millimeters. So yeah, definitely not that small. There is a slight taper to the, the grip section here, but just very, very slight. So 10.2, and then right at the edge here, we're looking at 9.4. So not even really a millimeter from the back to the front here. That's a good size grip section. Again, this is really a full size pen. It's quite comfortable to use. Let's do some comparisons just with some other more common pens. This is a Pilot Vanishing Point. Here it is with a Plummy Safari. So you can just see this is not a pocket size pen. I wouldn't really consider it a, a ladies pen. So the weight, and this, the cartridge in here is less than half full. So 30 grams and then 22.73 grams. So nice weight to it. It definitely doesn't feel cheap. I definitely like the smooth feel of the, the porcelain. This is a very comfortable pen. I can write a long time with this. All right, so for this writing sample, we'll be using a Mitsubishi bank paper notebook from The Paper Mind for Blake's broadcast. Viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. These are really nice with fountain pens. Okay, let's do the writing sample. So this is a Lamy Lady. And I believe this is a medium, and this is Lamy Blue. We do fast writing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, performance wise, this was me, not the pen. Really, really nice performance. This is, I love this nib. It's really quite soft. I don't think you're gonna get really much in the way of line variation, but it's very kind of a bouncy nib, which is, I think, typical for Lamy gold nibs other than the 2000 nib, but like the Lamy Safari style gold nibs are also just very soft. This is really, really nice to write with. It's very smooth and just very bouncy. You know, a lot of times with gold nibs, you don't really notice a difference between that and the steel. This, there's no mistaking the fact that this is a gold nib. It feels really, really nice. And of course, I really like the design of this gold nib. Now, in terms of reverse writing, uh, it's actually not scratchy, and it does seem to be doing it. Well, it's maybe a little bit scratchy. Yeah, I would say that this can do that. I mean, that is quite a difference in size, too. Really enjoy this nib. I love Lamy gold nibs. They, I think, are maybe a bit underrated. So what are my pros and cons for the Lummy Lady fountain pen? Well, the biggest thing here is the porcelain body. This is pretty unique. I, the design overall is actually quite unique. Porcelain body pens are not very common. The ones, the other ones at least that I'm aware of are all very expensive. Not that this is a cheap pen, but they're a lot more expensive than this. I, I really like the weird design. I like the satin metal finish. It just it's, it has a very nice feel to it. I like the nib. This is one of my favorite Lamy nib designs. It's unfortunately discontinued, but it has a very unique look to it. It's a very soft 14 karat gold nib, and it's a very nice writer. So really enjoy using this pen. Now in terms of cons, uh, well, they discontinued this, so it's harder to get, and it I think is getting a bit more expensive in price in the used market. This satin metal finish is not the most durable. You'll see some 
scratches, some wear marks. It's very similar to the finish of the Waterman Edson that I reviewed. Just not the most durable. You know, when you're buying one of these, definitely look at the trim for scratches because that's really where the wear is going to, to show up, uh, unfortunately. And there's not really a way, a way that I'm aware of to fix that. Other cons, you know, it doesn't post, which I don't like. Although if it did, I'm sure we would be scratching that. I'm not 100% sure why they call this the Lady. It's not that small of a pen, but maybe the design is ladylike or it doesn't have a clip, so that makes it a lady's pen. I'm not really sure. Not a huge fan of the, the name of it. I'm not a lady, so I don't want to use a lady's pen, but I do love this one. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen, paper, and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much, and until next time.